Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is May the 3rd, 2017, and that can mean only one thing. Yes, that's right, it's the day before the big Star Wars day, May the 4th. Also, there's a new Boruto episode out. That's the reason of this episode, though, not the Star Wars thing. So, as always, I'm going to go ahead and analyse, discuss, and review the latest episode, which is episode number five, The Mysterious Transfer Student. As always, I shall be putting slides from the episode up on screen if you do want to look at that, you know, um, at the plot points and stuff. If you just want to put this on in the background, then feel free to do that too. But let's jump straight into the first segment. Story. So it starts off the episode with someone kind of wreaking havoc around the town. He's a flame jutsu user who knows Iwabe. He's not really the main focus. He's just kind of there to demonstrate that he's a bit of a troublemaker. And uh, Boruto and his friends come across him. And Boruto's eye uh, activates and realise that he's possessed. This will be a theme that we see throughout the episode. Anyway, they chase him down an alleyway and stuff. but. As they run the corner, they realise that someone else has already taken him out. And we see a mysterious, shadowy person. That same mysterious, shadowy person we saw at the end of episode four. Who could it be? It's Mitski. This is... It, he's, he's introduced in class, like, after the opening. And, as they mention, he is from the Sound Village, which was started, uh, I think, by Orochimaru. I can't remember. Quite. We'll discuss that in the extra segment, though. But anyway, so he's introduced the class. He goes to sit by Boruto and seems to be kind of making quite fast friends with him. So then, fast forward a few minutes into the episode, and they're just doing their usual sparring things when Mitsuki asks to fight Iwabe. And during that, he demonstrates that he's really incredibly quick, much like his dad. Spoilers if you haven't seen Boruto the movie, but if you haven't, I don't know why you're watching this. And yeah, so he just moves really quickly and eventually gets Iwabe in a sort of stranglehold kind of thing and doesn't leave go until Boruto calls him out of it, which suggests that Boruto means a lot to Mitsuki, but Iwabe and the others don't really. And then a bit later on, we see him on the rooftop at night uh, talking into a snake or something. I'm not quite sure. The Naruto world has very interesting communication methods, to say the least. But anyway, he's talking about Boruto. He also mentions he wants to find out if Boruto is his son. Not son as in his, you know, that he's a father, but son as in the big ball of fire we see in the sky. I don't know what he means by that, because it was inverted commas, as in, I want to see if he's my quote-unquote son. But that's interesting. He may be talking to Orochimaru, I reckon, or there's some kind of plot going on. It's very unclear, obviously. So then, later on in the episode, they're all taking class outside again, because the classroom was destroyed in the last episode, as we saw. And one of the construction workers starts flinging around logs and stuff, which is a bit weird. So Boruto and the others go to investigate, and Boruto's eye activates once again, and realises he's possessed by the angry shadow evil cloud thing. I'm just going to call it the Shadow Possession, although that does sound like Shikamaru and Shikadai's thing, but you get what I mean. So yeah, he's possessed. When they're behind a wall preparing to assault him, Mitsuki pops up out of nowhere because he's a snake, and mentions to Na Boruto that, ah, he can see it too, which implies obviously that Mitsuki can also see this weird Shadow Possession thing. Shikadai also makes a passing comment that, oh, Maybe Mitsuki is the one that's, you know, causing all of them to be possessed, but I don't think that's the case. That seems a bit weird that Mitsuki mentioned he can see it too. Obviously, if he was making it happen, then he wouldn't mention that he can see it, really, or he talked about it as if him and Boruto were on a level. They can both see it. That doesn't mean they can make it, it just means they can see it. So that was a bit of a weird one, but I don't know, maybe... Maybe this is implied that Mitsuki has something to do with it. Anyway, so the next two slides are just going to be some shots of the battle. Nothing really happened. They just try to get to him to avoid him attacking them with by throwing wood at them, like large posts of wood. And so then they basically just take him out in average fashion. And then, so at the very end of the episode, we see that Shino is walking through the corridors and has some doubts, he feels like he can't control the class and things like that, 
and all of a sudden, a shadow with glowy eyes appears and possesses Shino too. And then the next time slide then shows that Shino has been possessed, and that's going to be the topic of the next episode. So overall, quite a um, possession-heavy plot here. We had three people, yeah, three people in all, uh, counting Shino as well, that were possessed this episode. So it seems to be getting quite strong now, whatever's happening. And Mitsuki seems to be involved, though it's unclear how involved he is. So let's move on to Extras and Theories. So, as with you know the other episodes, these are just little things I noticed in the episode that aren't very pertinent to the plot, but I thought were worthy of little little mentions. So the first one is I did, as I mentioned in the episode earlier, we do see that the classroom they had the big battle in last episode was destroyed, and they still have to work on it and stuff. That's pretty cool. I, I like the very slight continuity. It's nothing new, but you know it's nice to see the consistency. We also see that they mentioned that uh, Mitsuki is from the Sound Village and it was started by someone who wanted to destroy the Leaf Village. Now, that's a lot of people, but I think uh, the Sound Village is started by Orochimaru because in Naruto, as in the original Naruto series, I think that was the kind of cover-up for Orochimaru to send his goons in to do his dirty work, but it seems he wants to set up the Sound legitimately. I think they mention as well they've sent Mitsuki there just to show that they're willing to be friends with the Leaf to extend, I don't know, just extend their trust, I suppose. So that's cool. Also, so this scene, I may have mentioned an episode or two ago, one of the kids in the back, one of the background characters in Boruto's class covers up his face. As you see here, it's on the left as we look, or to Boruto's right. There's a kid who covers up his face. So I do wonder if that is Kakashi's kid, if Kakashi had a child with someone with brown hair. That doesn't really narrow it down, but I don't know. I could be wrong. It could just happen to be a child who likes to wear that fashion too. But the way that Boruto's character designs work, it's very clear that most of the kids share similarities of both of their parents, as it makes sense. So then the next two slides are showing that Boruto, surprisingly, is really clever, like really intelligent. There's a big equation that Shino writes on the board, and Boruto solves it really efficiently and quickly. And obviously Mitsuki does as well. That's not quite as big a surprise because you'd expect that Orochimaru is a very, very clever person. But the fact that Boruto is really intelligent is interesting. It clearly shows that maybe Hinata had a big hand in raising him. His Naruto was never that great with maths and, you know, academic subjects. But it seems Boruto is the opposite of his dad. Uh, one of many ways in which he is. So then the next slide, uh, we do see Shino goes for some ramen in, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's not called Ichiraku anymore. It's called something else, which I found interesting. I guess the old man who ran Ichiraku ramen just retired, and maybe his daughter, I don't know, maybe she went off to do something she wanted to? I'm not sure. But we do see in this shot an older Kurinai, which is lovely to see the Kurinai is still around. Actually, I wonder... Her child would be around Boruto's age or a little older. I wonder if that'll be a thing in future episodes, if we'll see Kurinai's child. I can't remember the name. Mirai, I think, was the name of Kurinai's child. Kurinai and Asuma, because obviously Asuma died. And yeah, they left a child called Mirai, meaning future in Japanese. And in the next slide, it's kind of nice to see the evolution of Shino's character because in Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, it was kind of a joke that he was the background character that everyone forgot. And he kind of still is. The joke is still there that everyone kind of implies he's not the greatest teacher. He's probably one of the worst. But it's nice that Shino feels like becoming a teacher has really boosted him as a person. He just wants to give back to the society that helped him. And that's really nice. I do like Shino. He was always... The kind of guy that I love the character design of, but was never really interesting. So it's cool to see he has an impact, really. And at the very last slide, it's pretty cool. We see that Irika, Irika Sensei, has become the principal of the school. Now, this may have been mentioned in a previous episode. I can't quite remember. But it's really cool just to see that he has also graduated to this. Actually, I think 
the final episodes of Shippuden, Kakashi may have mentioned there's an opening for Iroka to become the principal. So this isn't quite as big of a shock as I originally anticipated. Actually, I think I've already knew this happened. So yeah, that about wraps up my uh, analysis of the episode. In terms of a review, I gotta say I quite enjoyed this episode because the plot seemed a little more focused, whereas the last, well, the last four episodes were there just to introduce characters, and that's totally fine, I completely understand. Honestly, I expected it to go on a little longer, but now this newest episode seems to kind of combine introducing a new character and pushing the plot a little more central. Our next episode is a straight continuation of this episode, so they're clearly going ahead with the plot here as a central focus for at least the next episode, if not a few after, honestly, because the Shadow Possession thing is interesting, and honestly, I'm really excited to see how Mitsuki is involved in this. Personally speaking, I think he's gonna be fighting whoever did cause this, but there's hints that he's involved in it, so that's a really interesting breadcrumb trail of plot. So that about wraps up this episode. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I will see you again next week for Final Lesson, which probably isn't going to be Final Lesson, let's say, so they're just going to probably beat you know, or maybe get to the bottom of the Shadow Possession thing, but who knows. But anyway, until next week, goodbye. <laughs>